Um, thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Christian Schmitz. I would like to talk to you about the OwnCloud Foundation. Uh, but first of all, I think we should thank uh, um, John, Jürgen, and all the other people from the staff for their excellent organization, um, and also the University of Nuremberg for their hospitality. So thanks for that. Um, and I think uh, they're doing a great job. So that as an introduction. So I'm going to talk about the OnCloud Foundation today. Uh, apologies, uh, there is a background, but apparently the light for the camera would be too weak if we dim the lights. So now you have to uh, uh, deal with a rather bleached uh, picture that right there. So the way that I stru structured the uh, talk was trying to be empathetic about how you would wonder what the OnCloud Foundation actually is. And I came up with a bunch of questions that you may have in regard to the OnCloud Foundation. So the first question, I think, is the obvious one. What is the OnCloud Foundation? That's, I think, the key question that each of you might have. Secondly, I think a beneficial question is, how does it affect the OnCloud ecosystem overall? Right. Thirdly, what governance does it have? It's an open source project. So governance is a huge factor uh, in regards to decision making. And last but not least, the most important question, how can I get involved? I think that's, that's really uh, uh, the question that you all really are curious to find out about. And I will try to uh, dive deeper into each of those points. Um, and as soon as I'm done with my, with my points, um, I would of course uh, like to open up a and ask me anything question where you can come up with any question you may have in, in regards uh, uh, to the foundation and how it's set up. So let's start off with what is the OnCloud Foundation? First and foremost, and very simply speaking, it's a legal entity in the United States that is tailored to be a scalable organization for the OnCloud open source project. That is the bottom line. It's an independent legal entity that is legally independent from the own cloud company, which is, which is quite an important aspect in regards to open source. Um, and it's designed to be a scalable organization that is the home to all the open source development within own cloud. And of course, it's for professionals and casual developers alike. So whether you're a professional or you're a casual developer, the OnCloud Foundation is the right home for you and your activities within the OnCloud ecosystem. So let's look at what the factors are that the, uh, the foundation will address. First and foremost, of course, development. Open source development is a huge thing, so it will be a forum for that. But of course, it will also be a community forum. And with community, I mean things like getting together, uh, uh, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences, all of these aspects are going to be featured in the foundation. And thirdly, collaboration. Collaboration on topics beyond development. I think that's very important um, because, of course, operations are also a factor where best practices can be shared, right? And that, that collaboration on these topics, that's an important thing. And lastly, outreach. And with outreach, I mean reaching all the people that want to do things with own cloud and own cloud associated projects uh, in the world and making sure that they learn about best practices or new projects where they can assist or just derive value from. These are really the, the core aspects of the foundation. So, in summary, it's the community reloaded squared. Uh, it's going to be the new own cloud community home um, for all the people uh, that want to contribute and have, uh, uh, so to say, some, some aspiration to, to contribute and collaborate. With that said, the next question is obviously, how does it affect the ecosystem? What's really the goal of, of, of affecting something? Because the first thing was just words. Uh, so let's go. First, it's a form for your input. So however the foundation can affect the OnCloud ecosystem really depends on 
what you all want to uh, uh, bring to the table to make an impact. So if you have some exciting expertise and you bring it, then you will make an impact with that expertise, right? So it's, it's, it's something that cannot be easily answered in regards to without knowing what you're going to bring to it. But it's going to be there to make sure that whatever you bring, it will be put to the community. And a big factor of that is identifying synergies. We are seeing this as, as own cloud representatives or full-time own cloud uh, involved people. We are seeing that a lot of people across the world, in Asia, somewhere in Europe, somewhere in South America, they are all developing on the same problem. And they start writing their code and they have their little side projects that they finish or not, but still put into production because it has to be done. And that is, is something where the, the foundation as a scalable entity and an organization can really bring value to, to you as, as members of the community. Because you can find someone who has the same problem and you can join forces with them and then get a better result, right? And that's exactly the purpose of the foundation. You're all ha not doing this for the foundation. You're all doing this because you have problem and cases that you want solved. And you want to find someone with a similar problem so you can join forces. I think that's really the core of the foundation, using open source uh, software best practices to make sure that it works in the end, and having some sort of system beyond it, because otherwise you will not find the other person with a similar problem. And then we can go back to, to some very old school uh, uh, logic, and that is the whole is more than the sum of its parts, because if everyone brings uh, five pieces to the table, all of a sudden you have more uh, then the sum, and we're going back to before the uh, birth of Christ, actually, because that's an Aristotle quote. And that is, to me personally, that is the goal of the value that the foundation can provide to the ecosystem. Make sure that each brings a similar contribution, but all get more return in the end than they would by doing their own uh, projects. With that said, going back to the next topic, what governance does it have? It's often a touchy subject within uh, open source software and open source projects, uh, especially giving the context of, say, uh, um, um, Oracle acquiring entities like MySQL. So what we really want to make sure that you understand that it has an, a, a very, very transparent governance. and. The way that this foundation is run is, is modeled after other successful open source uh, software foundations like OpenStack and Apache. They have proven it can work this way, it works this way, and we are just going to copy it. And it already has a board of directors, and that is the entity that will run the OwnCloud Foundation and make the most important decisions and enable other people to do decisions themselves. We'll get to that in a minute. Let me just introduce you to the board of directors. The board of directors is composed of seven ecosystem stakeholders that are entities and people who are very, very strongly and strategically involved with OwnCloud, and two community representatives. These community representatives are the only people that are not yet present on the board. That's important to notice. The other board seats are actually occupied, and we're going to introduce them in a second. And then I will tell you about the community representatives and how you can become one of them. The voting is starting on the 1st of October, 2018. Check OnCloud.org for more information on that. But you may ask yourself, who can vote? The criteria is written here. Anyone with a valid CLA signed and submitted by 6 p.m. today, so you can still do it if you don't have a CLA yet, can vote for the community board seats. So whenever you want to uh, uh, appoint someone and have a vote on the OnCloud Foundation, you just have to sign a CLA to, to be able to do so. Uh, the reason why we have kept this... Uh, 
at today is because it's a unique thing. It will be done now. It will may be done uh, repeatedly, but the thing is we don't want to have, uh, so to say, an opening for someone to manipulate and have like 50 people or 100 people send in uh, uh, CLA applications between now and October to make sure that he gets on the board by the vote of his friends. We just didn't want to do that. So that's the reason why we have this mechanism. Um, the future mechanism will be decided by the board of directors and this will actually be uh, confirmed by the board of directors tomorrow. So it's not written in law yet. That is going to be the proposition to be made to the board of directors tomorrow. Now let's get to the board of directors. There is first the community elect number one and number two, the two seats that we mentioned. Thirdly, and now we are going in alphabetical order, Arnet has a community has a seat on the board of directors. Arnet is the Australian Research and Education Network, and they also host national libraries and uh, various supercomputing projects in Australia. Um, and they are represented on the board by Guido Aben, who is the director of e-research for Arnet. Secondly. CERN, with one person here present and more probably coming tomorrow. CERN is the European, or actually the Global Particular Particle Accelerator Facility in Geneva, and it's a global high-energy physics project that is well known for uh, receiving a Nobel Prize in physics just recently. Uh, and they are represented by Dr. Massimo Lamanna, who is the Director of Storage Operations, I believe, at CERN. Uh, thirdly, there is the ETH Zurich, uh, often called the MIT of Switzerland. Uh, the ETH is um, uh, a large university in Zurich with an engineering focus similar to the University of Aachen in Germany. Um, ETH Zurich is represented by Dr. Thilo Steiger on the board. He is uh, running their storage operations as well, and they also have a large on-cloud service in operation like the others. Next up, we have Géant. Géant is something that is an unfamiliar entity to most of you, but you are all using Géant infrastructure today as we speak, without noticing it, most likely. Um, Géant is the European supranational organization that represents national research and education networks. So in Germany, we have the, the DFN, which is the Deutsches Forschungsnetz, um, and in other countries, we have SWITCH or SURF, Switzerland and the Netherlands also represented here. And what Giant is doing is, Giant is representing all of these in the European and international context and also providing network con connectivity between those entities and also to the outside world. So they are actually running a very large uh, hundreds of gigabit network within Europe. And they are represented on the board by Klaas Viringa. Uh, Klaas Viringa is uh, also known for EduRome because he invented it. So Klaas is quite the famous guy at Giant. Um, and um, he's also on the board for, for Giant uh, at the OnCloud Foundation. He, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today or tomorrow. Then we have the G GWDG. Uh, the Gesellschaft für Wissenschaftliche Datenverarbeitung Göttingen, which is a joint venture between the University of Göttingen and the Max Planck Society. Um, they run a very large on-cloud project for the entire state of Niedersachsen, uh, Lower Saxony, and um, they are represented uh, in the foundation by Dr. Philipp Wieder, who is the deputy head of the GWDG. And I believe they also run an own cloud for the Max Planck Society and various universities in Germany. So they also are a key stakeholder to the project. Next up, we have uh, Konica Minolta. Konica Minolta is a global printer manufacturer and, and smart device manufacturer and IT solution enterprise. They're using own cloud, not as own cloud, but as a product called Doconi Sync and Share available to their customers and also to uh, their employees. It's, it's a system that will continue to grow uh, and they identified the OnCloud ecosystem as, as really a core project for them 
and they're represented by Daniel Schellhase, uh, who is a senior manager of the European headquarters. And then there is the OnCloud GmbH, which is the OnCloud company that you all know. Um, it's obvious why we are also represented there. In this context, it's important to, to point out that OnCloud does not have any particular uh, seats that go beyond or votes that go beyond what all the other members of the board of directors have. So uh, you can actually say that the two community elects have twice as much voting power as the company. So when it comes to, to discussions where you may, may derive that some entity may say, oh, OnCloud, that's not a community project. No, it's actually a very strong community project because we have a clear pattern on how community members can make decisions and they can make more decisions than OnCloud, the company. It's important to point out. And as you can see, from all these nine people here that have a vote, OnCloud only has one vote. It doesn't have veto power. It doesn't have anything beyond the other votes. So that is the governance model. Now to the most important question we're all waiting for. How can I get involved? Well, first of all, you're here. You're part of the ecosystem. You are already getting involved. That's very important, right? You are here. You're getting involved. You are already doing part of your what you can do, right? So that's, I think, something what you can probably do. Tell your friends about the conference so that they come next year. And of course, ask questions, what we will have later on, or here at the venue. Poke any one of the people at OnCloud Company, or if you, I'm quite tall, so you can always see me in the crowd. If you have any question about the foundation, poke me, poke anyone else. Uh, we are here to answer your questions, all right? The more difficult the question, the better. So don't, don't be afraid. There are no stupid and no difficult. There are no wrong questions, right? And after the question, you get an answer. Please provide feedback to all of the answers that you can, that you get. Open source development and open source ecosystems are a continuous development cycle, a continuous discussion and iteration of ideas. So, so you need to be involved. You need to provide feedback. Um, and I think as part of the community spirit, it's much appreciated to have uh, that feedback loop. And of course, after we all decided on something by asking questions, providing feedback and discussing, contribute. I think that's a logical step, but still important to point out, contribute with ideas, with code, with opinion. It's much appreciated. With that said, follow OnCloud on social media. Go to OnCloud.org or OnCloud.foundation. Join in, sign the CLA so you can vote. And with that said, we're going to put this into live practice. Ask me anything, questions and answers, please. Anyone? Jörn. Yes, that's the one that counts. That's the only thing that counts. Okay, yeah. He asked, he asked if, the, if the CLA that he signs as a developing contributor count for these community votes, or if it's a different CLA. And I apologize for being imprecise here. Yes, that's the CLA that counts. Class, please. The, the detailed list of what it's already owner of is available on oncloud.foundation or oncloud.org. But oncloud.foundation will directly get you to the subpage. It's already listed there. So you will find a list of, of, of what rights the foundation has on that page. And that's already there. It's not something that needs to be put into action. That's already there. Um, how, how can he asked how can he how can 
how can you uh, get elected? Um, as part of that process, um, that's it's still being built by our, our our people, but you will have the option to to uh, show up, right? But generally, um, what will be part of that process is that you can only suggest someone to be elected, including yourself, if you have signed a CLA, so that not anyone can just suggest someone. Any more questions? Come on, guys, ask me anything. Okay. Yeah, class. So repeating the question for the stream. Uh, so you are asking if there are any concrete actions planned for the board, uh, and if so, what they are. Is that a good summary? Okay, so the first step that the board will do tomorrow is uh, vote on the uh, chairman of the board and the secretary of the board. We currently have an acting chairman, being myself, and an acting secretary of the board, being Markus Rex, uh, and tomorrow there will be a final um, election on this and decision on this uh, within the board as part of the seven stakeholders that are in the board. Um, and the next step that is already an ongoing activity is um, the establishment of various working groups. So I've, I've had a discussion with Arnett, for example, yesterday on having a science ecosystem working group, because there are a lot of scientific users uh, uh, in the foundation that use own cloud, and they would like to join forces on specific topics that are very science-oriented and have discussions and working groups on that. The second part is, of course, we are uh, currently discussing in the board the drafts for the uh, different working groups, namely the architecture working group, the development working group, uh, and, and also the marketing working group. So we, we try to, to set up a, a framework for, for such working groups and, and action groups, so to say, uh, and then put them into, into life by, by voting on them and enacting them, which is the purpose of the board, and then uh, uh, letting those uh, who administer said groups roam free in their activities. So, I mean, the purpose of, of, of really the board is, is setting, setting the guardrails and the frameworks and, and, and for, for other people to populate, right? I mean, it's, a, it's governance, it's not activity. So this is really the focus on, on what we do, is we try to, to really develop governance models and governance structures so that people, such as hopefully yourself, can try to fill them with life, opinion, and action. Please. So um, for the stream, class asked what the relation between OnCloud, the company, and the foundation is, uh, as OnCloud is also a major driver of the software project, correct? Okay. So first and foremost, um, legally there is no connection beyond the one board seat that the OnCloud uh, company has. And of course, there, there are these various items that you will find um, defined on OwnCloud Foundation regarding uh, intellectual property. Right? These are the main connections uh, in regard to governance, let's say. And when it comes to development, uh, there is of course uh, uh, one item that will be uh, part of OwnCloud that will be the head of the, the architecture working group. Um, that is something that OwnCloud as a company will, will occupy that, that position um, to ensure the, the joint solidity and, uh, of the software. I think that is, that is really the core context here, but generally speaking, you are of course right uh, with your statement that um, 
people can vote with their feet, so to say, uh, in regards to open source projects. So if the company decides to develop entirely in a different direction, then the foundation that would be very negative for an open source project. Hence the, the logic of having that, uh, that architecture uh, technical working group head uh, from the company. I mean, we, we are actually seeing this in, 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 in a lot of discussions in the, in the open source context right now. We, there are different opinions from stakeholders and customers on how to go forward. And, and, uh, I think, uh, when you, when you do a, uh, an open source project in a, in a productive, in a value creating way, you cannot ignore the community and vice versa, right? You have to jointly find a, a common denominator and go in that direction. And I think that usually works when, you, when it's reasonable. And our project has shown, especially since the fork, that we are very reasonable at working together in a very open and documented way. Any more questions? Peter, please. Yeah, um, I would have to uh, say that I'm not enough of an expert to tell you the differences because as far as I know, most of the legal frameworks were uh, taken or strongly inspired by OpenStack. Okay, so I don't, I don't think there is a material difference. I'm sure a lawyer could figure out some, some differences in some interpretations, but... Uh, that goes beyond my personal scope. Any more questions? Please. Yes. So the question was for the stream, uh, what is the reason that the own cloud foundation is uh, hosted in the United States? Um, yes, uh, you, you, you alluded to it already. Um, are there legal reasons? Yes, because most of the well-known software foundations are in the United States. So when you look at, for example, someone wanting to contribute to own cloud, let's say a large governmental organization or a large corporation, uh, when they're already engaged in the Linux Foundation, the OpenStack Foundation, Apache, or whatever, they're the legal people and, and their uh, um, stakeholders and those who have to approve things will usually be a, accustomed to the logic of software foundations in the US. So it's far easier uh, for them to commit to something rather than reinventing something in the European Union. So we rely on best practices that somebody else has paved the way in rather than reinventing the wheel. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you. And um, sign up for the CLA. And if you have any questions, call me, send me an email, or go to owncloud.foundation. Thank you.